Good day. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking His glory to the ends of the world. Today's devotional is caption: Is the worship in vain? Is the worship in vain? And our team scripture is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter fifteen, verse nine. Please, I'm reading from the KJV. The Master says, "And in vain they worship me." teaching us doctrines, the commandments of men, again, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines, the commandments of men. God is not just pleased because songs are sung in his name. So God is not just pleased because you go to church, you raise up your hands and be speaking and singing in his name. There are Christians who say, I have been going to church all these years, but nothing seems to be going right in my life. Yes, God is not just pleased because church services or a mass is held in his name or honor. Men are moved by sensory perceptions, but not God. Their problem has been trying to reason out God through their minds. Oh, the service was appealing to them. Therefore, God too should and will be pleased. It is not so. God is not just pleased because you think something is nice and wonderful. The day Jesus comes, no man or Christian can argue his case. You cannot blame it on a church or your pastor. Because you have not forced you to be in any church. If a man of God is deceiving you, it is because you have allowed him. There is simplicity in Christianity. God made it as simple as it could so that no one will be deceived. So, beloved, Christianity is very simple. Sometimes there are many Christians who say they cannot know truth. But that's even the most simplest of all. To know who is speaking the truth is even the most simplest of all. But the problem has been that many Christians don't really understand what Christianity is. And what was God's plan about your Christian life? How did he do it so that you cannot be deceived? When you understand that, no one or no preacher will deceive you. You have to understand that. Many are deceived because they don't understand the principle and the path in the in the path, in the plans of God, the order of things of God, how you order things, oh, the wisdom of God. So when you understand that, then no one can deceive you. That is why I say, if a man of God is deceiving you, it is because you have allowed him. There is simplicity in Christ, as Paul would put it. What then is Christianity? Christianity is the life and faith of the Christ. So when you read your Bible, many times you refer to Christianity as the faith of Jesus Christ. Yeah, it is the life and faith of the Christ. To be a Christian means that now you are living out the life of the Christ on earth. To be a Christian means that now you are living out the life of the Christ on earth. So what did God do? He first made Jesus come live out that life on earth for you to see. And after brought the sinner in, brought you in, brought the Christian in, Jesus was the Christian prototype. He is our prototype. He came first to live out that life so that now no one can deceive you regarding the tenets. And the principles and guidelines of the life. You just have to measure anything you hear from the pulpit by how Jesus lived, his life, and what he said. So Paul says, when you read First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one, it says, "Imitate me, just as I imitate Christ." Yes, Paul says. Copy Christ. Copy Christ. It doesn't matter how loud the praises are. 
if what is preached in the church and the order of things are not consistent with Christ, forget it. God will not bless that. Then you ask, why then are some of them so rich? The problem really is that many Christians even don't understand riches. You see, God is important. You understand God's thinkings about things. Not how you see things and how another man sees you or see things. It matters you see things from the perspective of God. Because they, how God sees riches is not how many Christians have been taught to see riches. But nowadays we are in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a time when Christians measure their life by money. They measure their life by riches. That's not how God does things. That's how God sees things. Just read the Bible very well. You see. Just read the Bible. Because sometimes some people take just one verse from here, here and they take it out of context. They don't even understand the, the background of such statements. And they usually say what God is not intending. You have to listen to the very words of Jesus himself. Does God bless his children with riches? Yes. God bless his children with riches. But it's not every riches or world that even comes from God. There are some that come from Mammon. So you have to understand the difference. And even when God is blessing you with money, why is blessing you with that money? But in this context, understand as a child of God that not every prosperity comes from God. Including even Christian prosperity. You have to understand the fact that a Christian is rich doesn't mean that necessarily it was a blessing from God. You better understand that. Abraham had a covenant with Jehovah, but the flesh still produced Ishmael when he slept with Hagar. Abraham had a covenant with Jehovah, but the flesh, his flesh, still produced Ishmael when he slept with Hagar. God didn't say, the flesh would not produce since you have a covenant with me after the spirit. The man had a covenant with God after the spirit, but the flesh still produced Ishmael when he, Abraham, slept with Hagar. These were allegories. These were typologies. This is why a Christian can get a good job while disobeying God. If he or she has a good CV, like the unbeliever, he will get it too. Are there unbelievers who have good jobs, who have a lot of money? Are there unbelievers who are CEOs? Where did they get their money? How did they get a job? When they presented a good CV, they were called and offered that position. So you being a Christian having a good CV does not mean that you cannot be called and offered a good position just because you have a good CV. It doesn't necessarily mean that that blessing came from God. These are some of the things that many Christians don't understand. So everything that comes to them means it came from God. So where does the world also get such opportunities then? They are the world, they have good businesses. Where did they get it from? When they also apply for jobs, like you apply for jobs and they get it. When they apply for scholarships and also they get it. When they apply for grants and they get it, how did they get it? In the same way, when you're the Christian, you also have a good CV. It will produce for you. But that God bless a student with a job. In fact, yes. That God bless them for opportunity. In fact, yes. But it doesn't mean that every opportunity or everything that is presented as a blessing from God really was a blessing from God. Even when it comes to you, the Christian, and that is why you should be careful. The fact that you are a Christian does not mean that if you have a good CV, they are not going to consider you. They will consider you just because you have a good CV too. And that is why you have to be careful. A pastor can be rich. Just by being a good marketer in church. Pastor can be raised just by being a good marketer in church. It doesn't mean that it was a blessing from God. If a pastor, some of these fraud, fraud of pastors who are good marketers in church, they get money. 
It doesn't necessarily mean that it was what? A blessing from God. But that God also prosper churches. Emphatically, yes. Emphatically, yes. But you have to be discerning to know what really was a blessing from God and what really was a product of the flesh. God will not bless the doctrines and precepts of men. He will not bless it. His blessing is in the doctrine of Christ. This is why you don't just measure a church by how prosperous they are. You measure them by Christ. You measure them by Christ. Measure yourself by Christ. Measure yourself by the word. Don't measure yourself by material things. There was a very prosperous church in Asia Minor. Observe how Jesus addresses them. When we read Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14 to 17, he says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And what was the reason? It says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. So this was a prosperous church. He is talking to Christians. This were Christians who are prospered, a prosperous church. But look at what Jesus himself is addressing them. So now when you have churches, mega churches, and they are very prosperous, doesn't mean that they are blessed by God. The same with this Laodicean church, we are not blessed by God. It doesn't mean that they also they are blessed by God. It doesn't mean that God is happy with their life. It doesn't necessarily mean that the blessing is from God. Sometimes it can be that the blessing really initially was from God, but at the end they turned from the, from the path of truth. But the fact that a church is so worthy, or Christians are so worthy, doesn't mean that God is happy with their lives. Don't let anyone deceive you. Listen to the very words of the Jesus himself. Don't let a preacher deceive you. These were a prosperous church. But he says, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind and naked. Look at how he described Christians who were prosperous. Tell this to some Christians, would they believe that? But that's how Jesus described them. They were calling themselves that we are worthy, we are rich, we are inclusive goods, we have need of nothing. But Jesus sees them and says, No, you are wretched, brother. He's, he's talking to Christians. Not unbelievers. Don't let them deceive you with the message they preach that because of grace, no matter how you live your life as a Christian, you are going to heaven. That's how they, that's how they teach them. That is not Christianity. That's not the meaning of grace. Don't let them deceive you. Jesus himself is speaking. He says, you don't know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Is such a description going to heaven or being, going to the kingdom. These are Christians. Don't let them deceive you. It's the way sometimes Christians have been taught, especially nowadays in certain denomination churches, to think about money. Sometimes I, I, I cry for them, I pity them, because they don't really understand the wisdom of God, how God sees things. Read your Bible in the Acts, Acts chapter 4 to 5. What about Ananias and Sapphira? Why were Ananias and Sapphira? Die was it not their own money? Now, look at this this man and woman, it was their own land, they sold their own land, and they're going to bring the money, give the money to the needy brethren in the church. Yes, so when they kept part of the money, time, time, they, 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 their own money, their own land. These were Christians. Ananias and Sapphira were Christians. Read their context very well. 
But when the clandestinely kept back of the price of the price money of the land. What did Peter say? They fell and gave up the ghost. It was their own land that they sold. Don't let anyone deceive you. Don't let anyone deceive you. And understand the ways of God. You understand who you are as a Christian. And understand what it means when you say the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. But the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God bless you.